All right, welcome back to another one of our Guild Wars 1 playthrough uh, factions. And first of all, apologies for being a little bit late on my video upload. I actually had some uh, flu or throat. I'm still kind of recovering from it. You can probably tell from the sound of my voice. It's a little bit deeper. Uh, this is going to be a voiceover episode because uh, I just needed to make sure my throat was okay to get through the play uh, i went ahead and played without doing any narration first and then i'm going to go over it now with my voice basically uh but yeah here i'm just kind of checking uh my quests i picked up the new primary quest journey to a whirl whirlpool and i also need to cash in the reward from the stolen eggs that we completed in gala hatchery Kind of nice because you get some fa pretty decent faction from these primary quests. And I also am eager to see if I'm able to get rank one. So uh, from my from my Lux and faction, I got I, I checked really quick. I have like 13,000 faction. I was like, maybe that's enough for rank one. Uh, so I check over in Cavalon to talk to the Faction Rewards uh, NPC. I, the, the Allegiance guy, he's just for, for guilds, people who belong, who are ahead of a guild, you can talk to this guy. So I need to talk to Faction Rewards and notice that I've got 13,000 Lux in Faction. In order to get rank one, I check the friends of the Luxon. I'm already friends of the Kurzik, level four. And then friend of the Luxon, I have 44, 45,000 faction there. And I need a thousand, 100,000 faction for that, which is kind of insanity. <laughs> All right, so here I'm just kind of checking uh really is that how much faction i need so i decide i'm gonna test it out by buying some jedi shards and by spending some faction it increases the faction transfer so i buy some and it jumps up to forty-five thousand, uh or like fifty-five thousand. i'm just over halfway there to getting to the hundred thousand that i need it looks like hope oh i would like to get the pve skills uh, sooner than later, but I'm gonna have to do some more grinding for that. Maybe after we finish the first place or the factions campaign, we can have enough Lux and faction to get some PVE skills and then take them into Nightfall or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go to the Whirlpool with Master Togo, and it's gonna head to the Unwaking Waters mission starting from Leviathan Pits. And I decided to kind of change my build a little bit. I feel like messing with the uh, Illusionary Weaponry again. And I'm going to go Mesmer Warrior. Because I also want to try and capture some Warrior Elites as well as Monk Elites. So hopefully we run into a, a Warrior boss in this area. Also, I just think generally this Warrior uh, uh, Mesmer Warrior build is a little better, even though we do have those green daggers with the 20% enchantment duration. I feel like running the sword and shield gives us the defense bonus, and then uh, running flurry is just a better stance for this build right now. I'm just grabbing some henchmen. I don't really care which ones I grab, just make sure I get all the support ones that I need. And I'm going to head into Unwaking Waters. I had to pick up these side quests because if they're on the way, that's great. Uh, they do give quite a bit of Luxon faction, but some of them cause us to backtrack a little bit, which we don't want to do. So heading Silent Surf and then Unwaking Waters. And then I'm disappointed at first because as soon as I get here, I realize, oh, this is like deep into Luxon faction. So I guess over the weekend, the Luxon, or oh, sorry, the Kurzik faction, the Kurziks really must have done well in the uh, the PvP uh, event every weekend. I would like to join in that someday, but 
kind of at an awkward time for me. Of course, the first boss we run into is a monk. Uh, I was hoping for a warrior, but this monk boss has Shield of Judgment, which is a pretty good signet, actually. Uh, it's probably not a signet we're going to want to use on a hero later, so I'm not too I'm not too upset about missing out on it right now. And it looks like I can always come back and cap it later when I need to. Very convenient location for that. Got to make sure I uh, use Sympathetic Visage when I'm under attack like that by the melee enemies. Illusionary Weaponry just puts out so much damage. This is probably one of the, my favorite builds that I've come up with. I mean, I say I came up with this because I didn't I didn't consult any uh, wiki or anything, but I think it's pretty good. I noticed I set my attributes up wrong for it, though. I gra I did I left some inspiration uh, points in, which I'm not running any inspiration abilities or skills. So it's a pretty suboptimal build as far as the attributes go, but the skills and the equipment is pretty nice, I think. Our Earth, uh, or our, our Argo, he's got a really nice knockdown with his Meteor Shower, I believe. Or maybe that was Kai Ying, the Earth Henchman. Really good knockdown. I'm happy to pick up this Bone Charm and, and just immediately salvage it for the bones. Which I need to do. I'm kind of hanging on to a bunch of extra uh, resources. When I get the chance, I need to cash those in. Carrying them around for too much. Like, I've got a lot of gold just waiting to get by selling it to the uh, vendors. And I, it's also a good idea to keep an eye on the price of those materials because they do fluctuate, actually. I notice they fluctuate quite a bit. I think generally, like, bones and glittering dust should be in, like, the 400 range. They get up pretty high. And it seems the Luxon outcasts and these monsters do not like each other, so it's nice to interrupt. I'm not really caring about fighting too much in this area because I can't get any Luxon faction. So I'm just really pretty much looking for bosses at this point. I don't really care too much about skill points. I've got a lot of those. Uh, probably not going to get any lucky drops, so I'm not too worried about that either. But... Uh, elite skills, that would be nice. I'm not even really sure, like, Leviathan Mouth, there's like, there's like, different Leviathan enemies. So I'm not really sure exactly, like, are they pieces of a Leviathan? Like, is it kind of like a Final Fantasy X kind of situation? Remember, you remember Sin? From uh, Final Fantasy X, it would like drop off these monsters with body parts of itself. Maybe it's that kind of situation. These are little creatures that are used to be attached to a Leviathan. That's my theory. Anyone wants to correct me in the comments, you're welcome to. Pretty smooth sailing here, um, except this looks like a pretty difficult boss up in the top right, you can see. And yeah, we found a, me a Mesmer Elite Skill. I'm pretty pumped about this. Henry C. Sorrow. I'm really hoping for... Oh, I flagged my enemies back to some enemies behind us, it looks like. Uh, so we over-aggroed a bit. We're getting attacked from both sides. got the skill shared burden so i'm gonna definitely gonna pick that up i noticed blackout using it on the Gideon like is not i mean it's good but it doesn't block their they have like a monster only ability or uh blessing of the Gideon or whatever and it doesn't seem to block that it must that that ability must be immune to disables Yeah, this ended up being a pretty tough engagement just because I didn't notice that I had uh, 
aggroed some enemies behind us. Luckily, I avoided the other, the other uh, group in front of us. But those salt sea dragons, like with ride the lightning, they have so many P uh, AOE point blank area effect abilities. It's pretty devastating, actually, to our squishy party. But capture this shared burden, elite hex skill for 21 seconds. Target foe and all nearby foes attack, cast spells, and move 50% slower. Really cool ability. It's only five energy. Awesome. It's kind of like a mixture of the uh, what was that skill? Arcane, um, arcane conundrum, but it's actually cheaper with a faster cooldown, and it doesn't. It do, it affects nearby foes, not adjacent foes. So it's better in every way. It don't I don't get the energy back, but then it's also a mixture of that and imagine burden. It's like 21 seconds duration, move 50% slower, attack, like use skills slower. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Right away, I'm testing it out on these salt spray dragons to keep their area effect skills at bay. Blackout still comes in handy against them as well. I start to notice like, oh, I didn't put any, any domination skill or points in my domination attributes. Because my blackout only lasts like four seconds here. It's kind of a waste. Should at least be five seconds so that it balances out the skill disa being disabled. Yeah, I noticed it right here. I'm like, four seconds? What is that? Ah, oh, why did yeah. why did I only have six domination magic? So I, yeah, that's a fail on my part. The cool thing about the illusionary weaponry is it clears up so many attribute points. You don't need to run inspiration because you have illusion of weakness. You don't need to run um, any secondary attributes from warrior because you just need to use flurry. And that's a no non-attribute uh, skill. So you can... And then fast casting only really needs to be at level 9 to use the shield. If I didn't use the shield, you... Don't even really need fast casting, really. So you could max out illusion and domination and have a pretty good skill bars, I believe. Contemplating salvaging some of these, but my my inventory is not packed yet. So cast share burden on one of them and then immediately use blackout on the second one. And they are going to fall real fast. Didn't even really get a chance to attack. And now that we're finished with this area, we've noticed there's some Luxen priests over here. And that's probably why, uh, or because this Unwaking Water is controlled by both Kurzik and Luxen. This is a joint mission. So it's kind of like the Vizuna Square uh, mission where it it allows for two parties to play with each other. So it's a 16-player mission. This is going to be a combined a, uh, a comp combined effort of players who sided with Kurzix and players who sided with Luxens to do this. Um, pretty neat. Enter the whirlpool now and. Be a nice little cutscene. Love the music here, it's like Reminds me of the old, like, samurai movies. Those drums. Pretty sweet. Has the temple been secured? Yes, my emperor. There is no one inside. Your safety is assured. You will allow my retinue and my bodyguard to pass. They are coming with me. But... but no one except you is allowed inside the temple. Those were your own orders. There's been a change of plans. You will let them through. As you wish. Be 
beware the harvest ceremony. Beware the harvest ceremony. The Emperor. Oh, he is going to kill you. There's been a change of plans. But, but no one except you is allowed There's inside the temple. There's been a change of plans. But, but no one except There's you is allowed a inside the temple. The Emperor. Oh, he is going to kill you. All right, so we just got revealed, or just revealed that Shiro just obliterated the Emperor and all of his uh, body close bodyguards in the temple. Pretty scary sight, uh, but you know he's fully secured in as the antagonist of faction, so there was there was no mystery there anyway. Uh, so yeah, we're in Unwaking Waters. It's time for the next mission. Can I put... Yeah, sweet. I can uh, already turn in some more faction. We're up to 4,000. Still a ways to go for the friend of the Luxons. Oh, man. I wish I could get that. Uh, so I'm going to run Shared Burden this mission. Uh, let's see. What can I do? I'm probably going to... Keep illusion and domination. I think I'm going to go interrupt heavy with this because if they, if I can get shared burden on as many enemies as possible, I'm going to be much more like in a better, in a better way for interrupting. So I'm going to go interrupt heavy here. Let's see what build I can come up with for shared burden. All right. This is the mission or this is the skill bar that I came up with for shared burden gonna be some energy denial since i'm casting a lot of targeted spells i'm gonna use uh yeah i'm using a lot of non-hex targeted spells i'm gonna use mind rack to try and to try and um boost that damage and energy loss from it i'm also i want to get shared burden on as many enemies as possible so i'm gonna try arcane echo and since I'm using some high energy skills like Arcane Echo and Cry of Frustration, I brought some uh, Power Drain for energy management. And then I brought these three interrupts to try and wreak, wreak some havoc on them. Let's see how it goes. Uh, let's get our henchmen, standard nuking, and support team. Let's get... I want some... I want some range. I don't want any melee here, I think. All right, let's try it out. I'm bringing Signet of Capture. There's two skills that I'd like to get. I either want to get the Monk's Ray of Judgment, which is a really nice skill to have, uh, even for a hero or something. Um, and then I'm also bringing... Oh, I'm a Mesmer, so there's also the Mesmer Elite that I missed in Vizuna Square before the Stolen Speed. Uh, so we'll try and get that. I'm, I'm interested in this Shared Burden build. I think it's going to be nice. Might be good versus bosses. As long as they don't have like that reduced natural resistance thing. So This has a really long start timer just in case another player uh, queues up with the, on the uh, Kurzik side. We 
we can get some dance going on with our henchmen. There we go. Got some time to kill here. Might as well party. Yeah, and if anyone wants to run this back with me, I would still, I still want to make a video of doing uh, Vizuna Square and this one with full 16. Uh, that would be pretty sweet. This mission is not nearly as long, I don't think, as the Vizuna Square mission. I remember this mission being quite easy, actually. But we still need to be careful not to over aggro. Fighting a lot of afflicted, so standard afflicted target or afflicted um what do you what am i trying tactics that's what i'm trying to say oh, i can't looks like i just want to keep shared burden up then i guess i just want to keep spamming it I think it's effective. I mean, it essentially reduces all of their damage output and heal and supporting output by 50%. So I think that's quite effective. Oh my gosh, what was that? 300 lightning damage? Holy cow. I wish I have brought Wastrel's Worry for him. Okay, that interrupts him. Thank goodness. Yeah, see, I get that free 22 damage on him. Man, we almost we almost took him out just right there. So what do we need to do? We need to continue weakening Kunavong until the last barrier is destroyed. Whoa, it's a big group coming up. Oh my gosh, get out of there, get out of there, get out of there. Jeez, kind of just spamming skills at this point because they do so much AoE. Oh, so I need to keep if I want to use signet of disruption I need to make sure they're hex with either shared burden or mind rack at first because then I can interrupt skills That are not spells I'm, I need to get used to this Right now. I'm just spamming whatever I have a oh, ritualist enemy Oh mesmer awesome we're gonna get that Oh. This shared burden up. Keep spamming it. I don't know if they're removing it or not, but... Nice. Oh. Missing the interrupts. Yeah, I love I like this skill bar. I think it it works. It's just I'm not very good. What is this? Resurrection. Drop the orb to resurrect allies in the area. That's cool. Oh, I need to pick up the Mesmer ability. I forgot about it. Did I keep hanging on to this? I mean I don't plan on any of my teammates dying. Let me use this. I want to get the shared, what's it called? Stolen speed. This is a cool one too, I think. Uh, it's fast casting. So for six second spells cast by the target foe and all adjacent foes takes 100% longer to cast. And spells that are targeting these foes are in, or they take 50% less cast time. That is pretty awesome. So using it with shared burden is gonna be I wonder if that stacks. Do they do they take 150% longer time to cast spells if I keep both of them up? That's pretty mean. 
I'm gonna try it. I should start with stolen speed. Oh, what's with all these? Let me drop this one, see what happens. Oh, it used it. Huh. I don't think I need it, honestly. What? Come back. Yeah. Get over here. Man, how did I not get the interrupt off? Coming. Come back, dude. All right. So we weakened him. Now we can fight him at the top of this temple. This is a pretty short mission, actually. You can tell something's wrong with him because he's got this, like, green uh, affliction. <laughs> pretty cool an uh, animation, in my opinion. Uh oh. Green shot. Alright, so I think this boss fight is going to be kind of similar to Glint. So, he's going to have a lot of these, like, monster-only abilities. And I need to try and interrupt them as much as possible. That's kind of one of the reasons why I brought this build, but... Jeez, he's just, like draining all of my henchmen's health this is gonna be tough even with 16 henchmen he's getting low on health though so i think it's i think we're doing all right he's getting some of these skills some of these uh monster only skills off but yep just did it so his, his skill bar his health jumps up it kind of scares scary at first but that's just him kind of like respawning all right let's check out the Let's see. Shiro's grasp. Yes, this is corrupted my body and fought for control of my spirit. His foul presence tore at my flesh and withered my bones. This will end me. You. What is it he seeks? Judging from the locations where we've encountered him, I'd say he's doing research. Research? For what? Yes, you are right. He must be preparing a spell. A spell? To do what? To be a spirit and join the war. What is it you ask of us? She is very close to getting what he is after. He needs to do only one last deed and ask of his spell. What deed? What will he do? That which cursed him in the first place. He will spill the blood of the royal. Emperor. Yes, the blood of your emperor is the last component needed to do 
Shiro back with mortality. Your final task is to stop 